Alrighty, hey yo, what is up knights? Aegis Rick here, bringing you guys part 2 of the what to do at the max level cap of level 100. Now guys, in the first video, it was kind of like a precursor or a kind of preparation video for all the kinds of things that were kind of relevant in 95 cap. And as far as I'm concerned, honestly guys, we haven't really talked about the 100 cap content in earnest. Yes, we farmed a level 100 unique set, but remember, that unique set was merely as strong as the set that I have right now. Uh, which was the starting point of the level 95 cap endgame, okay? Essentially, it's just to play catch up with those who already have uh, the previous level cap stuff, okay? If you don't have that, that's a great way to catch up uh, in just a few days. But we haven't really talked about some of the stuff that is very, very important in 100 cap. And that's what this video is going to be all about. So you finally caught up. Now we're ready to talk about the level 100 cap exclusive content but for the rest of the guide video guys just keep in mind that if you see me wearing any kind of epics just know that whether it be the level 95 epics the tabers epics or the level 100 uniques they're all basically in the same boat they do the same amount of damage they're the same tier of gear so i'm going to go switch back to my male nin to talk about one of the very first features that you have to understand in level 100 cap and that is the cube contract one thing that you're going to notice about level 100 cap gear is that if you hover over the weapon it does not have an inflict element on it most of the gear in level 95 cap actually took care of that especially the tabers weapon and the upgraded black sky weapon already had an inflict element on it but you'll notice this knuckle right here does not have any element inflicted on it what that means is essentially you're not doing any elemental damage onto your attacks and the way that you make up for it is by use of the cube contract if you click the material tab here you have these cubes on the side here and if you don't have that then you can at least click this contract here and you can purchase it a week's worth for 500k essentially this is a feature of the game that you can't forget to apply onto your character to deal elemental damage so you guys can see here anytime you disassemble blue gear you'll get these colored cube fragments which you can then use to inflict an element type in this case i'm going to be inflicting light damage so don't forget to do this i know a lot of people who are getting level 100 epics or very strong gear and they're wondering like damn my damage increase didn't go up at all in fact it went down what's going on well this is most commonly the problem here is that you didn't inflict an element and therefore you're not getting the effect of elemental damage which again i remind you uh, if you guys have been following that optimization video it's one of the most important things that you can do on your character and you need to actually inflict the element for it to apply so don't forget to do that one of the main things about 100 cap is that a lot of gear doesn't have that option anymore another thing that's kind of exclusive to 100 cap that wasn't really a big problem before is that getting to the max crit level of 100 percent crit is a lot harder than it was in the previous caps a lot of the gear had crit on it nowadays though the crit isn't on the gear sets and you guys can see my crit level is really low what that means is that you have to try even harder to optimize your crit level okay that means you have to get enchantments that give you crit you need to focus on avatars you know getting a advanced avatar set and then putting some crit emblems into all pieces of gear you know you need to start considering your crit and making sure that you optimize your crit and that is a lot harder than it was in the previous caps you know it's something that you're going to have to consider especially when you start getting epics none of the epics are giving crit so you have to even optimize a little bit harder especially in 100 cap but those are the two main warnings i want to give you guys about 100 cap gear uh, if you're losing out on your damage even though you're upgrading it to stronger gear those two things are probably the reasons why but anyway guys once you take care of that uh, we're going to go ahead and focus on one thing that the very first thing that you should do once you get your level 100 unique set is that you should farm, uh, open up the Harlem area and then go to the closed area. If you don't have this area unlocked, it's a very simple thing. Uh, Severin right here will have a quest. Now Severin also happens to the, be the NPC to help us get our swap set. And this is the main reason that we're doing. In fact, I'm, I can demonstrate what the swap set is by use of the rental set that we have via the event. If you click this button right here, we can open up the buff enhancement window. And this is essentially the buff swap set. You guys can see here it is a full 12 piece armor set and you farm every single one of these pieces is here uh, in the closed area and when you open up the map here so uh, we're gonna go ahead and go into it now essentially you have access to this dungeon three times a week and you guys can see I've already gone in my three times so I have run it a little bit uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a reset ticket now maybe you're one of those people who back in the day had um, you know the other verse reset tickets they have replaced those items with the operation hope reset tickets and so i'm going to utilize uh two of those real quick essentially you have access to utilizing two of those a day if you have that item which is really abusive remember this is something that's only available usually 
if you don't have resets three times a week so uh, with this feature you can actually abuse it quite heavily and I know this is not available to everyone but this is yet for the reason why uh, I suggest doing this ASAP as soon as you're strong enough to do it jump into here because it is one of the biggest boosts of damage to your character that you can apply you guys can see here uh, how it works it's a very uh, cool dungeon where it's like a belt type dungeon where you can uh, basically don't have to load into very many maps onto this this dungeon which is kind of a cool feature you guys can see I'm actually following this little quest marker here uh, and that's gonna you know if I follow all the quest markers that will lead me to the mission here which says clear the echoing cave um, and there could be multiple paths to get there all I'm doing is following that little marker there and then uh, I'll be able to beat the little quest there and what beating the quest will do will give me a sizable amount of abyss fragments which that is the main purpose that I'm doing this content um, is to farm up abyss fragments I could get lucky and get some spawns of like the the, the frog that can drop the uh, swap gear out right the boss can also drop it as well as the dungeon clearance can drop it there's a lot of ways that I can get it just directly as drops and if I'm not lucky enough then I'm gonna have to buy them from Severin the NPC um, in which case you know I can purchase whatever one that I want so go this way this time doesn't really matter which way I'm gonna clear the quest essentially and there's a the frog I was talking about just really cool gluttony spawns in does a lot of damage to me and then he drops a couple pieces uh, fortunately he didn't get one for me for my character but kind of see you know if you're lucky enough to get it to drop you don't have to buy from the NPC it'll save you a lot of time so um, yeah I'm only gonna do one run of this but just keep in mind it's a weekly it just costs a little bit of FP to run into here so um, you know just whenever you have a few minutes to, to run this three times a week don't forget to do this do it as fast as possible because it's hard to explain how important this is but just keep in mind it's a very humongous damage increase for doing this so I'm utilizing all of the unique gear that I've already taken care of uh, in the previous video so you can see you're perfectly fine perfectly strong enough to do this content with that gear set that you farm so here you guys can see you've gotten 60 extra of these abyss fragments and then I can you know start farming up my set here so you can see I actually got an in tattoo which is part of my set piece so that actually dropped for me and so I don't have to buy from the NPC so I'm slowly but surely building up my uh, swap set right here uh, and I can replace this temporary rental set once I get a full set and then you know whatever pieces I don't get to drop outright for me I can just purchase from the NPC Severin now one thing I will mention about this is that if you go into the recipe tab she's actually selling you a recipe that can allow you to attempt to make a stronger version of your weapon okay so the weapon itself gives a lot of raw stats you can make this a slightly bit stronger but it's gonna take per attempt every time um, 100 abyss fragments essentially 150 abyss fragments and 20 terranium per attempt you only have a 10% success chance on that so you could try this several times it is pretty costly and it takes a lot of time something I only recommend when you have the FP to spare but something to keep in mind that there is some optimization to do with that swap set but once you're done you're gonna have a full swap set here which is gonna greatly increase your damage so first and foremost when you get your unique set the first thing I want you to do is to farm that three dungeon if you have any extra dungeon uh, entry tickets and farm those extra ones because that is super important that you put in your buff swap set alrighty guys now I'm currently on my female nan and I'm just now realizing this is the third member that I have shown off in this series of the triple B crew and if you don't know what that means uh, you're gonna have to show up to the stream to know what that means but anyway guys on my female nan and as you guys can see I am level 98 in fact if you're following this guide strictly then I'm gonna say at this point in time after you've you know farmed up uh, that operation hope go ahead and level up to level 98 you should be about level 97 so all you have to do is follow that scenario you'll end up in chest town when you do that and then after this scenario you'll be even a little bit past level 98 and ready to start farming those 100 legendaries I keep talking about now it's at this point that I want you guys to make a decision okay and it kind of depends on your play style right now okay you have two paths to go down now, okay if you're the type of player that only plays solo type content you don't have any friends you don't have a guild or you're you don't party up with people and you're just going to end up doing ten plus ten solo. Then my course of action that I would suggest is to stop trying to level. Stop trying to level right now. Stay at level ninety eight and level as slowly as possible. Because when you get to one hundred, you're actually going to be weaker than you are currently. And I'm going to explain the reason why that occurs. Is actually when I go into dungeons, you will see that I actually have a pretty sizable 
uh, buff that is applied to me only while I'm playing solo. So you guys can see down here, uh, Hero of Arid weakens dungeon monsters. And this buff, or I guess debuff on enemies, is enormous. It's in fact bigger than what you would get when you get to max level which i'm going to say when you get to max level you actually get a huge damage buff because you get new passives you get an awakening change you know getting to level 100 gives you a damage buff but because you lose the the buff when you get to max level it actually turns out to be a damage nerf as far as i'm concerned but this only applies when you play solo so i want to kind of preface this by saying okay if you're a solo type player you want the buff over level 100 however because this buff is removed if you join party play if you're the type of player who is in a party or if you're in a group of guys or maybe you're running with a pocket sater or whatever the case may be uh, then you, because you lose the buff it be, all of a sudden becomes imperative that you try to get to max level as soon as possible because you're not going to be able to have the benefit of having this overpowered weakened monsters buff and you can't capitalize on that that buff so it, it's those are your two decisions do you focus on getting to max level only if you're doing party content otherwise you want to try to keep it solo content uh, then you're going to want to capitalize on this buff which means you don't want to get to the max level of 100 in fact you're trying to avoid getting to the max level so you can abuse that a buff as much as possible now i'm not going to say if you didn't do that course of action you've made a huge mistake like i said you are going to be getting a huge damage buff when you get to level 100 due to the passives but it's just one thing that you can kind of abuse uh you know in the meantime before you get to 100 so uh, those are your courses of action again if you're a party type player then i guess focus on leveling but from this point in time guys we're going to be talking all about the level 98 grind farming level 100 legendaries now you need to have completed the level 97 scenario quest you can automatically skip it if you're level 98 which is exactly why I suggest you do that if you're a solo type of player because then you get access to the legendary dungeons now the NPC that's gonna help us to get all of our legendary equipment is right here the administrative officer Dorothy and you see just in the same vein that the Ghent Palace she's selling you know these card albums she's selling all of these uh, sets right here you know you can buy all your equipment here and the item that you need is the extinction crystal now again she also has some quests for some exp again like i mentioned if you're a solo type player then the goal is not to level up so i don't recommend picking up this quest and instead pick up the other quest i don't have it to show you but it's the same way that the Gent palace was at the end of it when you farm 10 dungeons of these legendary dungeons you'll get this legendary equipment chest which gives you one piece for free minus the weapon now you'll be able to complete that quest really really quickly because you guys can see right here we have access to these two dungeons the bottomless tunnel and the land of memories and you guys can see the rewards down here you can get some legendaries to drop out right and they also give the extinction crystal to buy the equipment from the npc now exclusive to our server which is really awesome is that we have access to these dungeons 10 times a day both dungeons 10 times 20 runs to get these legendaries and at the end of it you know i'm going to start going into here as i explain this by the end of it you're gonna uh, basically it takes about two days to farm uh, one piece if you're not lucky enough to just start getting pieces to drop out right for you which is huge yes 20 runs in this dungeon is not an easy task you know it's not a something that i'm going to say is throw away easy and anybody can do it but you know it, it's, it's dedication it's it's effort and dedication two days if you're diligent at farming those 20 runs you're going to be getting a legendary piece and honestly we're talking 20 runs is a whole lot of runs to give you a lot of opportunity to get those pieces to drop out right for you that's kind of the point here is that because we're doing so many runs a day we're also getting so many opportunities for legendaries to drop now i will mention just in the same vein that the um, expert dungeon back in ghent palace actually has a higher drop chance for for uniques the same way if you farm expert you do have a higher drop chance and i have have noticed that you do get a higher drop chances for uh, legendaries if you're able to run expert but I will say it is sizably harder it's 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 quite a bit harder so it is something that you have to consider is it worth the time to go through that extra difficulty to get a little bit of a higher drop chance I will say you know for most of my characters that aren't mega strong I do think it is kind of overkill to try and optimize that hard and I kind of just like doing the normal difficulty, which takes me a lot less time. But let me explain the two dungeons really quickly, guys. So this dungeon is a lot of people's preferred dungeon. Uh, it has basically some variable 
uh, you, you can handle it in different ways. You guys can look at the mini map right there. There are three different mini bosses. And once we kill two, the third mini boss will turn into the final boss. Now, this could be unsubstantiated rumor, rumor, I don't know, but the one with the horn seems to be the one that we want to be the final boss because apparently he has a higher drop chance for legendaries than if we were to handle this uh, this dungeon any other way. Now, I do think there are faster ways to handle this dungeon instead of going this path right here. You know, if you take out the mini bosses without consideration for the final boss. But again, you know, we're trying to get our drop rate up and this is one tiny little, you know, <laughs> optimization you can do. It's not that big a deal if I take this path or another path. They're essentially the same kind of speed we're talking about here. But a lot of people like this dungeon because, um, you know, it's a really fast dungeon. Like I said, it's it's really easy to get your 10 runs of this through. Um, and not a whole lot of consideration for, you know, the bosses. The bosses are not offensive and annoying. In fact, that's that's the reason why this dungeon is, is loved but between people who are farming this content is because it's not as bad as the other dungeon. <laughs> Let's put it that way. The other dungeon is way worse as we take this guy out. And I'm going to showcase why that's the case. Uh, right now, ready guys, if we make our way over to uh, the bottomless tunnel, um, really the dungeon is more or less the same. I, I guess you're just killing normal mobs and you're killing mini bosses along the way. This time it's not a variable dungeon. You can't just, you know, go your own route. There's only one way and we're going down and down and down deeper into this tunnel. Um, but, the, but the main issue that people have problems with this dungeon is that, you know, it does require that you have more AoEs, that's one thing, but the main thing is, is the final boss is very annoying. He has a transformation gimmick that he has when he gets to a certain amount of HP, which kind of wastes a lot of time. I know some people who are so annoyed of this dungeon that they don't run it uh, at all. They just opt for, okay, I'm only going to do 10 runs a day, and you know I'm only going to do the other dungeon because this one's so annoying. This one, you know, I don't think you can avoid it. This one is going to take you more time to finish, but at the same time, you know, it kind of depends on whether or not you're willing to, to farm the content half as fast as the next guy. I mean, maybe it's not all that important to you. Maybe you're, you know, farming 10 different characters and you don't want to deal with this dungeon. It makes perfect sense to only farm 10 runs a day instead of 20. But just know, if you want to get your sets really quickly, you got to struggle through this dungeon. And you're kind of going to see why it's so annoying. Is because, you know, a lot of your damage is not going to connect because, you know, we're waiting for this guy to fight you. Oh, man. That really is annoying. And then when he gets to this phase anyway, he's also a very annoying boss too because he, you know, has a lot of jumping moves. Doesn't like to stick around. Yeah, you can kind of see why this boss is, is, is hated a little bit more than than the other boss we had to deal with. And you can see that the clear times are sizably, you know, percentage-wise, a lot slower. You know, it could take you a long time, especially if you're not able to hit your moves as nicely. So those are the two dungeons. I mean, that's legendary farming in a nutshell, guys. I mean, this is the main reason why we wanted to optimize our gear a little bit because you guys can see. I mean, I have plus 10 Sky Legacy. I have my enchantments, some weak enchantments. But, you know, I've put a lot of enchantments on my gear, on Harlem level gear, and it's still taking me a little bit of time even on the normal difficulty. So this is why I suggest optimizing your gear a little bit, getting plus 10 on your weapon because this, this grind ain't easy, okay? Obviously, if you're playing a little stronger character, your clear times will be much faster, but that's kind of the point. You want to optimize your clear times because you're going to be running that for quite a bit of time. Now, again, like I said, if you do those 20 runs, it's essentially going to take you two days to pick up any piece that you want. You could just go ahead and rush your weapon, or you could just be patient and wait to see what drops from the bosses. Again, like I said, you have a chance of getting a legendary to drop from either the boss clear or the dungeon clearance itself and you know whatever you don't get you can purchase from the npc the same tips that i gave for the Gent palace dungeon guys you just pick up your weapon first if you want to try to get a big damage boost and then just kind of wait to see what drops and then you know use your chest or use you know whatever materials that you have uh, to get a quick set if you want a quick boost of damage just keep in mind that if something drops you don't want to have purchased it already. You know, you want to try to purchase only things that haven't dropped yet. So that's kind of my tip for that. And that's how the legendary grind works. It's pretty simple. Alrighty, guys, now that we got the farming out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about what strategies I employ whenever I purchase uh, these level 100 legendaries from the NPC. Now, first and foremost, this is something that I kind of alluded to in the last video, but that is every single day we have a reset of the grade of the equipment. You guys can see today we have weak, 
29%. Again, like I said, this kind of grade resets every day, and it applies to every NPC in the game for that day. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what equipment you buy from any NPC, it's going to have relatively the same grade. And you guys can see today is not a great day to pick up this item because, of course, it's week 29%. I'm going to be losing out on a lot of different raw stats, and this is especially important when you look at uh, in particular the armors as well as the accessories because those have elemental damage modifiers on them and they are directly related to the grade of equipment that modifier is very important and if you just get a whole bunch of inferior grade gear you're just going to be so much weaker so my suggestion is obviously to wait until a superior day and the fact that these take forever to farm and these are sets that you might be using for a long time it's in your best interest again to wait for a superior or at least an exceptional day because you're going to be missing out on a lot of stats second thing i got to talk about is the armor you guys can see if we look at the armor here we essentially have two different types of sets we basically have our choice between the black set or the white set and the difference between them is essentially the black set is considered the dps set and the white set is considered the synergy set now if we actually look at the stats that they provide you will notice that the white set because it's a synergy set it is a little bit weaker than the black set as can be expected you guys can see just the raw stats on them as well as the set effect um, that the set is you're going to be doing a lot more damage when you get the black set but that being said the white set is still massively important specifically for synergy characters because you do get a little bit of damage but then you also provide this amazing synergy effect which can basically give all the other members in your party a 20 percent damage buff so obviously this is something that is going to be desired at least one person in the party should be wearing some type of set like this uh, providing that synergy effect and trust me it's a really really useful effect and i would even suggest it even for people who already have super tabor sets because the synergy effect is incredibly good the last thing that i want to kind of mention about the armor sets is that the only thing that really matters when you get one to drop is the color of the armor you guys can see right here i have two pieces right here they just happen to be the heavy armor set but when they drop they can be any armor type they can be cloth they can be leather they can be plates and the cool thing about these sets is that as long as the armor master is the same between them they will share the same set so any piece of gear that drops you can go ahead and if it's not the one for your class like for instance chaos is a heavy armor class you know if it just so happens to be a cloth piece you can just go ahead and take that gear and go uh, we're gonna go ahead and teleport to back to Harlem uh, back in 95 content there's an NPC right here the strawberry nose Della who has a feature called the retexturization feature which retexturize you guys can see here we can take those legendaries and retexture it to any other type of armor mastery that we want simply by using this feature it will cost a few legendary souls uh, so a little bit of gold and some materials very marginal cost on that but what it will allow you to do is basically retexture into any piece and like I said as long as all of the pieces are the same you will retain the set effect this applies both for the black set as well as the white set so don't go throwing away armor just because it's not your mastery all you have to do is retexture it and then you can use it just fine now the first question that's always going to be asked and i'm always going to be asked this i don't think i'm ever going to be able to avoid this question how strong are these level 100 legendaries okay just like in the last video where i said the level 100 uniques are about the same tier of strength of the harlem epics as well as the tabers epics they're on the same level the level that these level 100 legendaries fall into is actually the strongest gear set that you can farm okay if you were in the previous cap and you were farming prey raid okay and you were farming these equipments right here the dark power equipment like this one right here if you have the old black sky weapon if you have these prey accessories these are what you call prey graduate gear okay because you have graduated from farming prey these are the gears that you get after you clear prey rate okay those were the best gears that you could farm in the previous cap best in slot of the previous cap and i'm telling you that these 100 legendaries are on the same tier of these gears yes they are slightly weaker but I'm, I'm saying marginally weaker but they are on the same level they essentially will get you into the same content you know oculus hasn't been released yet as i make this video but this is the gear that you're gonna farm to be as strong as this character can be and strong enough to do oculus so yes this is on the same level of gear as a prey graduate character somebody who has prey gear 
equipped it. But as you can imagine, because this kind of coincides with the prey set, this kind of leaves us in a conundrum, okay? What if you're one of those people who were currently farming prey? Is it worth it to get these legendaries or should you continue to keep farming prey until you get it? You really are in a tough spot, okay? And you really have to make a decision on your own end. Like I said, these legendaries are just tiny bit weaker than the prey sets, but the prey sets are indeed stronger. Now the way that I would go about it is if you're close if you're really close like for instance I'm farming my black sky weapon on this character and I just farmed this week enough to upgrade that weapon of course just go ahead and upgrade that weapon you know I was very close to finishing it yes of course go ahead and finish it but if you're not close then let me tell you this legendary grind is so much faster than going through the weeks it's gonna take you to upgrade a Tabor's piece into you know a black sky piece or you know one of those prey graduate accessories it's going to take you a long time to do that getting this full six piece legendary set like i have gotten was so much faster than it would have taken me to get the materials to upgrade my tabers equipment into the prey grad equipment so honestly guys it's it's all a matter of time it's all a matter of perspective you know is it worth it yes if you're close Okay, but if you're not close, then it might be beneficial to take that damage increase right away because these are so much faster to farm. And that's exactly what I did. And like I said, you know, I'm, this character is going to be so strong that she's going to be able to do most all of the content that's going to be available. If you look at this character, this is the start of the end game for me because, you know, I can't get much stronger than this aside from, again, the level 100 epic. So this is kind of the goal. Maybe you have full legendary level 100 set or maybe you have a half and half kind of deal. You know, I have my weapon upgraded. I have my super tape and then for all the other pieces i couldn't get i just went ahead and got the legendary so you have to be smart about this if you're close don't just opt to do it now if i go into this character who has essentially the same gear you'll see he's in a little bit of a different scenario because i don't have enough materials to upgrade this guy's legacy weapon into the black sky weapon well essentially i don't think it's worth the time to start from scratch to try to farm the black sky katana and i think i'm just going to take the hit and go ahead and get the legendary level 100 katana and this is where i'm going to introduce you guys to the engraving system. So let's go ahead and go back to Loton so I can kind of talk about this. Now engraving guys is exactly the same thing as the inheritance system that we talked about in the last video. The only difference however is that instead of transferring equipment stats over from level 100 to 100, this time we're transferring from level 95 epics to level 100 anything really uh, and you guys can see right here we have two options if you have a plus 11 or higher you will have this option it will say okay do you want to go ahead and reduce the effect of what you have right now and take it down to plus 10 obviously you never want to do this option uh, this is basically if you're being a cheapskate and you only want to use 50 alite and one engraving stone then you take this option but you want to keep the options you know this is worth a lot plus 11 katana ain't easy to get it costs a lot of money you want to try to retain all the values when you transfer it over uh, but you will see it will increase the cost of how many engraving stones now alite we talked about you know it's a it's a material that you can buy from the auction hall and you can farm for it in a lot of level 100 content this item right here the engraving stone however can only be farmed in one location you can purchase the uh, engraving stone at Lotan himself but you're gonna need this wisdom crystal and you can farm wisdom crystal it says right there in the guide of wisdom and that's what actually dropped when we in the first video some of those uh, wisdom crystals actually dropped you're gonna need a sizable amount of them so it's gonna cost you 1100 of these wisdom crystal fragments essentially what that means is you need to farm a lot of hells to get these wisdom crystal uh, crystal fragments and so you know that's kind of yet another thing that uh, we'll talk about once we actually get to that point but just keep in mind it's gonna cost you more materials because it's plus 11 if it was only plus 10 or lower it would only cost me one engraving stone and 50 airlines so that's the only difference but of course you're gonna always want to take this option because getting to plus 11 is very very valuable and of course in this type of situation the 50 airlight is definitely worth the price of admission to get this feature applied they have to be in the same slot and they have to be the same weapon type when we talk about weapons so yes I have to do it to only a katana you can't just go ahead and move it onto a zombato and the thing you have to understand and the reason why you have to make a consideration and why I wanted to stop before I talked about this is that you need to know that you can't go back from this decision once I make this decision it's permanent I can no longer go back and try to put this plus 11 back onto my my level 95 epic uh, it's essentially a one-way trip so the engravement system is a one-way trip 
uh, this weapon, even if I were to keep farming prey and I ended up getting the Black Sky Katana, which is indeed stronger than this Katana, I can't go back and put those stats on. So it is a commitment for me to make that. Yes, I'm committing to doing that, uh, but it's a commitment you have to make just on your own. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what is the smartest option to do, but I wanted to kind of tell you the warnings about the engravement system and just know that you can't go back to a level 95 epic after you move it to 100. You're stuck in 100 cap, which again is fine in this situation. You know, once I get a level 100 epic katana, uh, we are going to be off to the races. We're going to forget about all level 95 cap gear. And that's kind of the point with Loton's systems. Yes, you can utilize your old gear. You can, you know, even transfer, you know, my super taste set. If I end up getting a epic level 100, I can transfer my super taste set stats over. You know, it's just all in in a progress to try to get you into 100 epic gear or 100 level gear in general and then you can forget about all of the old gear in the previous cap but anyway guys that about concludes everything that i wanted to say about the level 100 legendaries hopefully i was able to cover your question regarding that now i, I thought this was just going to be a two-part series but guys there's just so much left on the table a lot of tips a lot of things related to uh, even level 95 content as well as the level 100 epic we haven't even talked about that and so so there's a lot of strategies that I want to give so there's going to be one last video in this series and hopefully I'm going to be able to cover just some discord tech that I can let down on you guys to really help you guys boost yourself but as far as this series goes guys this second video is definitely the one that you want to capitalize on and make sure that all of your characters are at least getting themselves the level 100 legendaries to kind of set you up for really how the end game looks like in level 100 cap but until then guys give me a little time to make video three of this series and i will catch you nights later